All right, Shadow Trucker again. Today is Sunday, June 6th. <clears throat> We're going to go over the interior of my truck to give you guys a little info on what they, they look like. If you get it, this is a 2021 though. You know, we hold uh, 2018 2021s across the company. Mainly Freightliners. Some of them are Kenworths and Peterbilts, like I said in the very first video I made. Uh, but I got a request from Alina to show the inside so that she can see what they look like in some of the comments. So that's what we're going to go over today. So sitting in your driver's seat, this is pretty much what you got. Don't worry about that little trailer ABS light on it. It goes, goes away whenever I roll the trailer a little bit. That's just kicked on today because it's been sitting here like that. But uh, yeah, you got you know, normal. There is a camera up in there that only faces outwards. This company doesn't do inward facing cameras. Um, and that only activates, you know, if there's an incident, you're speeding excessively, uh, you get into an accident, hard brake check, stuff like that will trigger it. And then you'll get a message from safety. Uh, we run Omnitrax, um, not the Qualcomms, which, I don't know, I think these are a little sleeker. Uh, they're definitely faster. <clears throat> they're not on those pivot joints, so it stays put for you. The only downside is this cord right here, which I wish would have been tucked through the wall, but it runs around over there. Yeah, you got all your normal switches, your gauges, everything like that. Um, this is just a note card that I keep my information on for when I'm picking up or delivering. And I just keep it back there. But it's just in case this system goes down, I always have it wrote down. Uh, you will notice though that they don't have the fifth wheel release, any button for the fifth wheel release up here or over here. So you have to get out there and manually pull to release your fifth wheel, which it's not that big of a deal, but it is nice to have the, the switch over here. You also do not have your trolley brake or your trolley valve for your uh, trailer brakes anywhere up here, which is also not a big deal because you don't really need it. You got your cup holders down here. Um, I've heard some people complain about them being moved to the lower area because if you have dogs or stuff in your truck, they're more likely to get into your uh, drinks and stuff like that because they're sitting lower when they used to be about up, you know, about up here where it was a little harder for them to get into if it was a small dog. Uh, this came, it was on the truck when I got it. It's nice to have, but you don't need these. All right, so you got your passenger side. You know, just like driver's side. Uh, driver's side has six six switches over on for the seat though. Not this is just your up and down, and then your uh, lumbar support right there. We have six on the driver's seat, which I have the door closed and the truck running right now, so I don't really want to go out there and start that up and make it all noisy. You no longer have a glove box on the 2021s. You got that little nook down there. Uh, your fuse box is back there. You can pull, you know, right there. Just yank it, and the whole this whole panel pops off if, if anything ever goes wrong with your fuses. Still got your little door slot. And then we got a, a bunch of compartments on these. So we'll get to that actually in just a second here. Let me turn all these lights on. All right. This is your bunk area back here. That's what it looks like. Your upper bunk's up there. You know, twist the handle, it comes down. Your upper bunk is slightly smaller than your lower bunk. This is a twin XL. And that's uh, just a regular twin up there, essentially. Um, but they're they're a great size. And then under here, you got your little pull lever. Pull this, and then your bunk will come up. Since we don't have uh, APUs with the AC and the bunk here, or the, well, we do have bunk here, but since we don't have AC, uh, APU or EPU or any of that, we don't have that crap that sits in here. So this whole area is empty under here. That side, side is still sectioned off like normal. That is uh, my inverter. Uh, I think it's 1800 watts. The company, not all the trucks have them, it, but if you pay for it, if you buy the inverter, the cables, all that stuff that I went over in the very first video, they'll install it as long as it's not over 2000 watts. Um, so I just use this for, you know, this is just whenever I bring my stuff on and off the truck. It's empty right now. That's just my dirty laundry bag. So it's not sitting up top. That's also empty because I stopped by my house and dropped off a bunch of my dirty clothes. So yes, I do change my clothes it's just empty because they're at home right now um you don't have to make a bed that's just something i do it makes me feel better you know having a clean area whenever i'm going to sleep you got your bunk controls over here uh, all your lights um and your sleeper mute to silence everything uh, and then your controls for you know heat and ac and then that's supposed to be your s bar heater or bunk heater and this tells you your voltage for your batteries and everything like that 
if you're on optimized idle, whenever this drops, I think to 12.5 or lower, your truck will start to cycle again and turn back on to get those batteries charged back up and everything like that. You also got a light up there. You got the windows up top with a little bit of AC and a switch up there also, which that's your sleeper dome. For your sleeper dome light, the one, one of the lights up top, we got all those lights up there. The other side, you got a window and then you got a little storage tray up on uh, the top of both of those. And then you have a, another light up there. You also have speakers that sit up above the bunk. So you do have surround sound in this truck, essentially. And you got your two little vent ports for the lower bunk and then your nets. That's the net for the lower bed and then the net for the upper bed, you know, obviously up there. All right, so for the storage for this truck, up, up, up above over here, this whole thing all the way across is empty or it's open. You can store stuff. So I keep some baby wipes in case I need to wipe my hands, wipe my face, stuff like that. And I keep a roll of paper towels, which is almost empty right now. And then I keep my hard hat tucked over here. If you actually stick it in there, it stays. It gets gets snugged up in there and it won't slide around while you're driving and stuff like that. Um, on this one, it came with a CB mount already in here. The CB radios don't come with them. You got to purchase your own. Even the Kenworth T680 that was 2018 that I had, had a CB mount up here. So I'm assuming all the trucks have a mount. Um, not necessarily all of them have an antenna. They, this one was tied into the FM antenna, antenna on the truck that's factory. And I was barely reaching out about a mile. So that's the factory antennas in these trucks are garbage. But it's better than nothing. You know, you don't got to pay for that. You could just buy a cheap radio if you want to. Um, buy yourself a little speaker and tuck it in there for your CV so you can hear better. And then you got your little top shelf up here too. I can turn my light on. No, I can't. Um, but yeah, you got your little top shelf up here. Uh, keep stuff in there. It's you know, it's a pretty good slot. It goes about, about that far. Um, I keep just little things up here. Uh, my wallet, my mask, uh, some stamps for whenever I do paperwork. Above the driver's side, Got another little cubby, which I actually got a flashlight in there I can grab. There you go. So you got another little cubby you keep stuff in. I keep index cards, uh, some paper clips, sunglasses, hand sanitizer, the fuel book for you know truck stops. All uh, the truck the truck stop book also. On the passenger side, you got another one. That's where I keep the books for the truck and the radio and then you know safety regulations uh my log or my yeah my log book in case my e-logs go down emergency response book and then some smell stuff that i keep on the truck the truck doesn't stink or anything i just like to have the truck smelling nice that's that's just how i am i like a clean space as you can see i don't even wear my shoes in the truck they stay over there my spare shoes stay over there and i keep this floor clean you live in here anywhere i mean if you're an over-the-road driver, you live in here for anywhere from a week or longer at a time. You need to keep this space clean to keep yourself healthy. Up here, uh, I just keep my peanut butter, all my silverware, another full roll of paper, full roll of paper towels, and then some minor meds behind the paper towels over there. Uh, you know, if you get headaches or some Pepto Bismol, uh, some Gas X, whatever you need, uh, you know, keep it on the truck. And then behind the driver's seat, right here start down on the bottom I guess you got this little compartment pretty good size um, I just have excess stuff in here right now my spare CD which I just changed out to that new one this one still works perfectly fine I just wanted you know upgrade the whole system so that's this whole side will be emptied out and taken home except for my GPS pouch and then I keep a little vacuum some gloves uh, spare fuel gloves for filling whenever I go get you know diesel DEF all that crap right above that you have this tray right here you can sit down at your bunk. You, know, you got some space in here. You can sit down, pull this out. This is, I don't know, just stained on there from the previous driver. I don't know what it is. I tried wiping it off, some Clorox wipes, but it's clean. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have that fold-up tray anymore because they put a drawer over there, which we'll go over. So you got this. You can sit down, eat at it, and it closes right back up. This is where you can keep whatever you want, really. So it's got, it doesn't have that normal hanger bar that used to sit in here. Let me see if I can hold the phone and flashlight the same view. So the old trucks, they used to have a bar about right here where you'd hang stuff up. This one now has that bar 
all the way up there. It's a little harder to get your hangers on. I mean, unless you put them on right in the middle right here. If you stick the hangers up through here, it's a lot easier. But if you're trying to come off the side, it's harder. But um, yeah, you can, you know, my jacket's, well, the arm touches the floor, but the bottom of the jacket's kind of, you know, right there also. Uh, I keep a rain jacket and then a thin jacket just in case it's a little cool some days. My bag for my laptop and then my hygiene or my shower bag for whenever I go take showers. I load everything in there, you know, a pair of clean clothes, the soap, shampoo, all that good stuff and take it with me. And then your AC vent runs right through there, which you know, comes out right there. And then in the door, keep an umbrella and then a spare battery, uh, battery pack in case like the engine for some reason won't start. And I need to charge my phone to make an emergency phone call. Keep that stuff with me. It's always good to have backup stuff. Above that, you have another pretty good sized cubby up here. And I keep granola bars, tuna, jerky. Uh, there's Neo in there. This is usually really full. But, you know, like I told you guys, I got stuck out here for an extra week. So I got to go, I got to go buy some more groceries and uh, restock. <clears throat> On the other side, above the driver's seat, I'll keep my trash can there. Uh, behind my trash can, I keep a dustpan in case I need to sweep the floor. Above the passenger side, I like to keep a cubby with cleaning supplies. Uh, I got spare trash bags, rags wipe things down, um, extra baby wipes to fill that thing up that I showed you that was up there, some Windex, Clorox wipes, and then some turtle wax scrubber stuff for the fabric in case anything ever gets on the chairs or on the seat belts or anything like that. So over here, uh, that's also, you know, that's just the plug-in. That is a Scentsy Pod. That's what I use to keep the truck smelling good. That stuff I showed you that was in that compartment above the passenger seat. Um, like I said, you know, truck doesn't stink. I just like to have something that smell good in here. So this truck came with a fridge, thankfully. I keep food in here too. A few cold waters, some jelly, a loaf of bread, yogurt, Hillsire snack packs, a lot of Gatorade. I mean, this is a little freezer, which is, you know, magnetic. It sticks up there when it's open. Uh, I don't really use the freezer. I don't carry frozen food on the truck because I don't cook anything on the truck. Uh, might get a smokeless grill at some point so I can make some steaks or something. Um, but as of right now, you know, I just carry the normal stuff. So this is the drawer that replaced the drawer that used to be with this tray. And it's a pretty good sized drawer. You know, this is where I keep my Atlas, uh, my tripod whenever I usually make videos for you guys. Um, you know, spare pens, uh, highlighters, magnifying glass for the Atlas, um, stuff like that. Uh, it's a pretty good size drawer, you know. It's not bad at all. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Turn that sideways. Uh, you got this little nook up here also. Now, this one I've heard people complain about also, because you, if you stick anything on here and you're driving, it's going to go sliding. You can get that rubber matted stuff from Walmart or wherever and stick it on here. Uh, with like some little sticky tabs or something to hold it down and then set stuff on it that way it doesn't go flying around but otherwise you know you, i guess you could set your laptop on there and watch some movies or something or you know mount your tv on the wall or whatever uh right up above that is your microwave nook or storage whatever you want to put in there but you know generally for a microwave uh there is a strap in here which i have locked down right now but there's a opening through right here so if you put your microwave in here you can put the strap on this side so you can access it and tighten it down rather than trying to jam your hands on the side and mess with it you also have uh, more plugs right here you know to plug the microwave in and then you got your little 12 volt uh, power outlet right there also if you decide to put something else in there right up above that one you got another storage compartment just like on the other side this is where i keep my clothes at for right now uh like I said, you know, I've dropped a bunch of my clothes off at home because I was supposed to be home and I was, I went past the house, so I dropped them up there. Uh, but you, know, you can keep your spare pants, shirts, underwear, socks, and then I keep some sleeping stuff on the backside over there. Eventually, this cupboard will become where I keep my shower bag, my laptop bag, my backpack. And in this cupboard, I'm going to get a shelving unit to stack these clothes, you know, up on top of each other. Now, just in case you guys did want to see how this bunk here works. You twist that to unlock it. You know, just twist it either way, it goes both ways. Then you just pull this down. And your bed just sits down like that. It doesn't lock in anywhere when it's down, it just, just sits there like that. To get your ladder, you just pull this red handle right there. As it's a squish, just push it like that. Pull your ladder over. Pull it down. 
And that's how you get up into your top bunk. And you got all these little red tabs in the bottom of the ladder. You know, that's just where they kind of click in. But on the bottom, these two right here are the ones you really need to uh, kind of concern yourself with whenever you're closing it up. You just pull those. Right now, my ladder's kind of stiff because the truck's still fairly new. But you'll just pull those, slide the whole ladder up, lock it back into place. Here, let me do that real quick, set you guys down. There we go. All right, so yeah. Hold the bed down. There we go. So yeah, slides back up like that. Tip it back. Locks into place. Push your bunk up. And when it's loose like that, you just slide it forward a little bit and then just shove it back and it locks in. And then you can pull on it and it won't come down. And that pretty much covers the whole inside of this truck. I mean, if there's anything you guys want me to go over specifically with the inside, you know, again, let me know. Uh, we'll go over it. Uh, I know another thing Alina did ask about was idling. These trucks, um, since we don't have the APUs or EPUs, we do idle uh, these trucks. You can just sit here and let it run all night. Roughly, uh, they say you burn about a gallon an hour when you're when you're idling so you know when you're doing a 34 hour reset you're gonna burn 34 gallons of diesel or close to it um now for optimized idle you know you have your switches over here and your switches over here you can go through all your settings and stuff these are mainly for you know your uh you're blinking your lights at people phone calls and then your uh cruise control and crap like that and then your little display window thing which is just that now these ones control your settings for up here so if you want to put it into the optimized idle function, you just go to the little, go to that little setting right there, the little truck, you'll go down, sorry, right there to the bottom one, uh, you'll hit OK, and hit OK again. There we go. Uh, to avoid unintentional vehicle movement, do not move gear selector when opti idle is enabled. You hit OK again, and then right here you'll set it to on which is, you know, it'll just basically cycle to keep the inside of your truck, you know, cold or hot, whatever you set your controls to. Um, I'm not gonna enable it because, you know, it, it'll it start shutting my truck on and off. I don't wanna do that right now. So when it is in optimized idle, I have, I have tried it a few times. It's kinda iffy. Um, when you set it, even with your heat and AC set, the truck does not always like to turn on to keep the truck at that temperature, which is why I just generally let the truck idle the entire night. I don't put optimized idle on all the time. Now, if it's a cool night, I'll set optimized idle, and you know, I can crack one of the vent ports in the back or something because it'll keep the truck cool enough without having to run my AC. But if it's like you know, it's been getting hotter and hotter and all that humidity and stuff, I keep the vent ports closed and I let the truck idle to keep the AC going. Uh, now, same thing in the wintertime. If it's a warmer night, I'm not going to run the truck. If it's colder, I'll run it. Or you know, I'll, Actually, I can put it on optimized idle in the wintertime, and I can run the S-Bar heater to keep it warm in here, because you know, the truck will automatically start and stop, and that heater will keep me warm. Um, you may have noticed there's a few things that are not under my bunk. There are no snow chains. There's no shovels. There's no extra crap at all. When winter rolls around, make sure you get some snow chains either from the company or buy them yourself, or you can buy the snow socks. Carry a shovel. I don't care how big it is, so you can dig your tires out if you need to. Um, it's not a bad idea to carry salt. I know that crap makes a mess in your truck, so that one's that that's up to you. Uh, carry extra clothes in the winter time too. And if you're one of those guys that doesn't like to carry a crap ton of clothes, like I know you see, and I keep my clothes in the truck. I usually have you know two weeks worth of clothes in my truck, uh, enough for every day. I don't always change my clothes every day. You know, usually every other day, you take a shower, go change your clothes. But I will change my socks and underwear every day, so definitely keep enough of those in there. But if you're one of those guys that just likes to carry one week's worth of clothes, make sure you bring some laundry detergent with you. Most of these truck stops, they got they got your washers and dryers in. You can wash your clothes here. Some of them will actually sell laundry soap in there. I mean, most of them usually carry laundry soap in there, actually, because they're truck stops. Um, but yeah, just you know, take care of your truck. Keep it clean. Um, don't damage it, because if you leave or if you get fired or whatever, you know, the next guy is going to have the truck and I know you guys don't want to come over here and get a messed up truck don't leave it messed up for somebody else keep it clean you don't got to keep your shoes on a little mat like I do you know you can you can wear your shoes around your truck put some rugs down if you want to then take your rugs out on the weekend go home and wash them or you can make it a mess like some of these other truck drivers I see where they open their door 
and it looks like they've been having rave parties in there or something. There's crap dumped all over the floor, all over their dashboard. You're going to get in trouble whenever the company sees it. You're, you're probably going to get written up. Uh, that's It's not your property. It's theirs. I, I get it. You're living in it. And you can clean it before you give it back to them. Just keep it clean from the get-go and you'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, Lena, thanks for the questions. Um, you know, I'm glad to get the video up for you guys so you can see what it looks like. Uh, the rest of you guys, you know, same thing. Go ahead, drop some comments in there. I'll get back to you. This weekend was a lot easier. I'm on my 34-hour reset, but if I'm not, you know, I will get back to you when I have the opportunity, and I'll try to make some more videos for you. You guys take care.